The new book, Some of Me, is out now. Please welcome back to the show, Isabella Russolini. Very well, thank you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Last time you were here, um, when I saw you on the show, and then I saw you on Chicago Hope. Ah, yes, you did. You were very good. Oh, thank you. It was a two-parter. Yes. Did you watch did. the show before you did it? Were you a fan of the show? I was a fan of the show, yeah. and then they asked me to be a guest, and uh, they asked me which disease I wanted to pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And instead of picking a disease, I decided to do uh, a story on infertility and adoption because I have, uh, I have adopted one child. And, you know, as you know, sometimes there are stereotypes about adoption. So we thought that maybe by doing a little program, they could shed some of those away. And it was a great program on adoption. And there's a wonderful chapter in your book on it, too. Thank I, you. I was uh, struck by the insensitivity, but I've actually experienced that too because my son yeah. is adopted as well of uh, some people coming over to you and saying which one is your real child yes to me too because I have a biological child and an adopted child and so you know and as he grows up I think he'll suffer from it it'll be hard for right. him one reporter said something about your your parents and him not having the the genes, the famous genes of Ingrid Bergman and Rossellini but he was funny you know it, what surprised me was my answer because I said Oh, he doesn't even connect me to my parents. He connect me further on to Adam and Eve. And as I said it, I said, oh my God, this is too apocalyptic. He's going to laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's true. Um, I have been so lucky to have, you know, a biological child and an adopted child. And I did not expect, adoption, you always approach it as a remedy for something that, you know, you wished didn't happen. So, you know, you go to adoption. And when I experienced it, it was more romantic. It was the sense, it was a further reach. You know, there was something very, almost spiritual about it. You know, it was really wonderful. It was moving the connection. You know, we are full of stereotype about birth mother abandoning their children, being bad mothers. And then you fear, who, who is going to be this child that I have? What genes does it have? When you see the reality of it, it is so moving. They're generally very young, poor people. And they have wonderful mothers that yeah, decide for the best. Exactly, right, it's the, the most child. generous and, act I think that you can and ever it's do. It's so painful for them, and when you witness it, you know, you, you, it just, it is so moving. And it, it is really treated it with uh, great dignity in the book. I had so many of the similar feelings about it oh, as great, your chapter great. here. You talk a lot about the fame. Uh, your your parents, of course, both very famous, and yes. on your your children. Do you, you think? <laughs> how, do you think your daughter has has? Uh, done well with it? Yes, I think so. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it was hard for me when I grew up to understand how famous my parents were. You know, I've always used my uh, school, uh, my friends at school to say, well, is my mother, my mother is Ingrid Bergman. I would say, is my mother as famous as John Crawford or less? What about <laughs> Greta Garbo? You know, they were my barometer because I couldn't tell. I mean, people say that she was famous, but I, it was my mom, you know, right. how famous is she? And the same thing happened to my daughter. When she was born, I was already working with Lancome. So my po photo was everywhere. I did this campaign for a cosmetic that was massive and lasted for 14 years. And the photo of mine was everywhere, at the airport, in the freeways, magazines. Right. And my daughter, Aletra, was taught at school if they got lost, what to do, you know, to memorize their phone number, their address, and all that. And then the teacher asked my daughter, if you get lost in an airport, Aletra, what would you do? And she said, oh, I'll stand under my mother's poster. <laughs> because, <laughs> because she believed. That a, <laughs> she believed all these posters were, with all these people in advertisement were mom and dad. <laughs> they're, you know, they're plastered everywhere in case children get lost. So they, they have their image of their parents. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great idea if we could do that. Yes, people's, <laughs> people's parents all over airports. If you're lost, just go find your mom and stand the yard. <laughs> Um, there's a great story in the book about how you thought your dad was pregnant. Because yes. your dad was a little bit chubby, right? Yes, but you know, the thing that, it was the combination of two things. It was the combination that my family had been in a great scandal because my father and mother fell in love. My mother became pregnant when she was still married to her first husband and not my dad. And throughout my childhood, and then my parents divorced and my father remarried and so throughout my childhood there was we were always in gossip magazine always talking about extra matrimonial affair extra matrimonial children i didn't know exactly what it meant plus my father was fat and extra matrimonial i understood he was extraterrestrial <laughs> you know 
<laughs> so I knew women were supposed to be pregnant, but that fame, the fact that the press was talking so much about us, I said, you know, it might be that my father is pregnant. And my father was an incredibly loving father. He would always say to me, but really seriously with regret in his face, I am so sorry, I cannot breastfeed you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how I came to the conclusion he was pregnant. <laughs> that's very funny. It's full of really sweet, wonderful stories. And uh, we're going to talk about the book about Catherine Hepburn. I love that elevator story. <laughs> okay. and after we get back from this break, more with Isabella Rossellini after this. Isabella Rossellini, Some of Me is the book, available right now at your local bookstore. Now, in the book, you talk about meeting Catherine Hepburn, yes. which I found surprising because I would have thought that you would have known each other. I don't know why. Yes, well, a lot of people assume that I've known a lot of Hollywood stars because of my parents, but we didn't. We lived, uh, we lived in Europe, and I don't know, they, maybe they socialized, but they didn't bring... I don't know, I've never met them. And one day, I was in the, at the Pierre Hotel here in New York, and we were, actually I was going to the memorial of a great friend of my mother, Irene Selznick, who was the uh, wife of David Selznick, the producer of Gone with the Wind, so it was a very serious moment. I was in the elevator and Catherine Hepburn walks in. So my mother always said to me, the stars they hate to be looked at, don't look at them. So I recognized her and looked down, <laughs> obeying my mother. And as I looked down, and I, I didn't see how she was dressed because I was interested about her style, you know, her famous style. But as I looked down, I see the pants and they are all shredded at the end. So that's very surprising. So I keep my eyes lower, but I can't keep them off her feet. <laughs> and then she says to me with a, her voice, completely, and loud, because actresses generally, they have a very loud voice. My mother used to say that she had a loud voice because she had to reach the last row of the theatre, but she did it at home as well, you know, so I don't know. <laughs> so she said, are you Ingrid's daughter? You know, and I was <laughs> completely <laughs> petrified. Blue Velvet had just come out, oh. and I thought, she wouldn't like that. <laughs> you being nude and all. Uh, right. And then the mask and yes, the sexy right. weird thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I immediately felt very... She, and she said, oh, uh, she said, oh, yeah, you're Ingrid daughter, yeah. Bye. Okay. Mm, huh. You know, and I felt more and more cringing. And then she walked right off. And that was it. That was it. I never knew if she was against Blue Velvet, if she was upset with me. <laughs> I was so petrified. That was the only uh, time. Did you ever talk to her since? No, I've never met her since. That was the only thing. But I tell you, because I didn't look at anything else and her feet to be respectful, <laughs> <laughs> she did have shredded pants at the end. Shredded pants? <laughs> yeah, at That's the end, interesting. she had stringy. Stringy shredded pants at a funeral. Yes, isn't that strange? It is kind of strange. Do you think it's me that I've gone into a, a kind of a... That you were hallucinating? Being, yes, no, hallucinating I don't out think of so. Of meeting her. No, she probably <laughs> just was like, the mm -hmm. calories are in bloom and my pants are shredded. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. You know, you look a lot like your mother. You've heard that before. I, I definitely know. see the similarity. Do, uh, do you see it? Yeah. Well, I... <laughs> Dana's mother does, so there you have it. <laughs> I've been told, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm told, though, sometimes I catch a cab and cab drivers say, oh, I thought I was going to pick up Ingrid Bergman. You know, I'm so surprised. My son the other day watched TV and there was Anastasia and he said, mommy, mommy, oh. thinking it was me. Really? But when, with, when my mother was still alive, you know, we would look at each other in the mirror and we'd say, no, you know, it's two people exaggerate, you know, because they know that we are related, but we don't look so much alike. And then one day I was in an antique sto a shore, a st a store and there were many mirrors, old mirrors, and I was walking and looking at different things to buy, and an old lady comes in, quite dignified and kind of elegant, and she walks around, and I thought, hmm, she's very upper class, I better avoid her, you know, I know she wants probably to have a privacy, that's what she emanated. So every time I walked close to her, I walked the opposite way, then, hmm, she comes, here she comes again, and I walked the opposite way, and then I bumped into her, and I looked up, and it was me. I had not recognized myself. <laughs> I had thought, when I was at not yet recognizing myself, she reminds me of my mother. I even said that <laughs> as a clue. And it was you in the mirror? It was me. I had grown old. I didn't know that. <laughs> I had become a middle-aged girl. Woman. <laughs> Oh, that's a great story. You should definitely buy the book. How is your son? He's about three and a half now? He's three and a half, yes. Yeah. But, well, he's cre incredibly attached, I mean, to, to an extent that I, it's, uh, you know, I would say, love me a little less, please. Yeah, every time you leave, he has a fed, right? But leave. I mean, even if I go, you know, to the kitchen to get a glass of water, mommy! 
Yeah. No. Did he ever hit other uh, babies when he was two? Yes, he did. He did. But he stopped now. He did uh, around two, two and a half. And then he we just couldn't stopped. take him to the to the playground. He would fight. Yeah. Boys, you know. Yeah. But he, mm. my son, only does it to like newborns. Newborns. Uh, <laughs> he does like you take no, him to the playground. He's Mister Friendly. Smart. Friendly. Smart. He yeah. knows they can. They, he's going to win them all. You know. He's gonna exactly. Win all the he's going to beat them up, and he's that's not what he beat does. Up a six and year it's old, so uh, embarrassing, isn't it? Awful, because you feel that it's, you know, I immediately called the doctor, all my friends with children say, because I had a daughter, she just, you know, the game they played to get, you know, my daughter always cured the dolls and changed the diaper and all this. And my son instead wakes up in the morning and says, Mommy, I need to kill. <laughs> Kids gotta hang around each other. They both come home with black eyes. But if I won't feel guilty, if you won't feel guilty, is that a deal? All right, that's a deal right there. Boys. Isabella Mussolini, Some of Me is the book. Go out and buy it. Thank you very much for being here. We'll be right back with Lori Beecham after this.